Google has been in its A-game since the AI race started and many have attributed this to the vast resources that have been available to them over the years, running one of the biggest tech companies in the world. This time, they've hit the market with SGE, which is Search Generative Experience in full. And what you have on the screen now is just a quick demo of all the features that they've packed into this thing, and it's pretty amazing. We'll shortly be taking a look at the full presentation from Google I.O. Annual Developer Conference, so get ready, because this will blow your mind. What this is, basically, is Google trying to bring in advanced AI in their traditional search engine. I knew before now that Google will likely be doing something with their traditional search engine, but I was kind of rooting for Bard to be used for this. But I think what Google is doing here is creating a special tool for this, just like Microsoft has done with Bing. I don't think we have a full picture of how this will run yet, because Google is still limiting access to the program. As of now, the program is only available on Chrome Beta, and that's after you signed up for the test with Google Search Labs and gotten approval via email. However, we've been able to get a sneak peek at what this software looks like now, during the I.O. conference, and we'll likely be seeing certain upgrades to the present version when it finally rolls out fully. The presentation was a really impressive one, and the first thing that we were shown about this product is how it can look when you use it. As you can see here, they still maintain the whole regular Chrome setup, with all the search results with the blue link you'll usually see. But when you look up here, right at the top, you'll see they've made some additions. And what you have is the conversational pattern you'll find in Bard and ChatGPT. This goes directly to provide the exact answers to the query. This is really going to be huge for Google because they already have the audience. And what they're doing here is basically piecing together all those features that make you look towards other products and bring it into their own. This is really genius and no doubt they'll leave a mark with this one. And I'd like you to listen to part of this video, there's something here that's really impressive. You probably wouldn't ask it in this way today. You'd break it down into smaller ones, sift through the information, and then piece things together yourself. Now, search does the heavy lifting for you. What you see here looks pretty different, so let me first give you a quick tour. Now, what you just heard here is that Google is looking to bring in that natural language experience that you'll usually have with Bard and other LLMs into Google search it will no longer have to be the user struggling to find suitable keywords that best suit his search in order to get desired results. But one thing you'll quickly notice is the difference between this setup and Bing. And that's not really much, just that you won't find the source links included in the conversation part to the necessary information. Instead, what you see here is that the source links are by the right here, and that you can actually expand that to view more links. But one advantage I think Bing has in this aspect is that it's easier to sort through information from source links in Bing than in this one. One thing I think is really impressive about this addition to Google search is the ease it will provide. Let's say you just want to quickly look up some information on the go. You don't really have to source through the host of links that will be the first thing you usually see in the Google search. This generative model automatically simplifies that by picking out key details for your query and you can still scroll to find the traditional Google search results if you want to dig deeper. And that's not really even the best part. You know how some search results usually lead up to more questions? Now, instead of asking them all differently and trying to piece them all together yourself later, this integration provides the option for follow-up questions. And you'll find the button right here at the bottom left of the AI-generated part. How cool is that? And when you click that button, you automatically enter this chat mode but you can still really scroll around to get other details if you want. And we even have suggestions as to what questions you might want to follow up with next to the follow up button. This here is really going to be an immersive experience that we'll have with this integration. And given that Google search is already very much widespread, getting people to key into these features will be a walk in the park for Google. And lest I forget, one really good advantage that we have with this advanced AI search is the ability to get what could have been spread out over several web pages in one go. Normally, you're not likely to get all the information you need about a search on one regular Google web page. So what this feature does is that it quickly searches the internet and gathers essential details to answer your question. 
and even ends up providing new perspectives that you might not have even thought of. From one of the demonstrations from Google, you see this very simple prompt here, good bikes for a five mile commute with hills. And the result of that simple query was far more encompassing than you might have actually thought. You see here that it basically goes into providing you with details about what will be considered a good fit for your search in the first place. You can see the bullets pointing out things like battery, motor, suspension, and other features you should consider. Now this is just like seeking advice from a professional, which is just really, really insane. The attention to detail will be the biggest selling point of this technology. And observe that it doesn't just always present search results in that conversational manner. For this particular search, it adopts more of a listing method. And I'm not sure if it will be much of an issue or just another plus. I guess we'll find out once we finally have them available for use. Also, at the beginning of this video, I did make mention of Google exploiting the vast resources they've already gathered over decades of dominance in the tech space, and that's what we are seeing here exactly. They're leveraging the vast resources that they have with the Google Shopping Graph. As you can see in the last search result I just showed you about the bike, the AI was able to even show the bike options, seller, and even reviews. According to Google, there are about 1.8 billion updates to the Google Shopping Graph every hour. That's a huge plus as users will always have fresh content. They're able to keep track of new listings, what's available and what's not, and even how to get them. Google is really going all out and I'm eager to see how the other companies will be responding to this. We already have similar software in Bing, and each comes with peculiar features that give it relevance. And since this Google search feature is still running in the test lab, there have been no reports of ads from users. This will be because they're still focused on fine-tuning the software. But in this demonstration from Google, for commercial searches like the ones I just showed you about the bikes, they do intend to include ads to both help sellers and buyers gain easy access. From this other video, we learn that instead of just consuming already existing materials, you can ask the AI to generate a whole new material. This is just basically like you'll see with chatbots like ChatGPT and Bard. So you can prompt for a poem or any other thing you'd like to see. Microsoft has been able to do some impressive things with Bing also, and it has some of the features that are not included in what Google just announced. But as you know, this is just the beginning for all these new developments, not minding it's moving at a crazy speed, so we'll be seeing optimizations soon enough. Just like Google tailors their new products to be able to somehow merge with existing ones, Microsoft has been able to do the same with Bing. In one of our previous videos, we did discuss the integration of Bing into Windows, and this gives a whole lot more experience to Windows. And if you watch that video, you will learn that you can basically control anything from your computer from that integration. So you see, what these big tech firms are doing is just looking for the fastest way they can roll out their products to millions of people. And what better way to do that than using already successful channels? In the case of Microsoft, that will be the widespread usage of their computers with Windows. And for Google, one of the biggest search engines ever to be known. One other interesting product that Google just announced is Soundstorm, and we have a whole video dedicated to this. I'm really eager to see how they'll be using this to optimize the Google Voice Assistant, and I'm sure that it will be really worth the wait. And in case you're just hearing about that for the first time, this new product is basically an AI-powered audio generator, which has some really impressive capabilities that are very scary on the other hand. I'll leave a link in the description to this video so you can take your time later to look through and understand how this works and the pros and cons. Google is pulling some really interesting cards these days and I feel that it's going to be really tough game catching up for the other tech firms. We'll keep observing and we'll keep you in touch with new updates on this and more, so make sure you subscribe to our channel and watch these videos. Bye now!